Well, hello, friends. Thanks for joining me again this week. It is such a pleasure to be with you and uh, take the time to give you a little bit of encouragement from God's Word. Hey, some 35 years ago, I met a lady. Uh, she probably remembers our meeting because uh, she has a great memory. Her name is Shirley, and when I first met her, she seemed to have some very sad eyes. Shirley's story is one of pain and a lot of hurt, and um, some may even say that she was abused in a lot of ways. Uh, there were burns on her back, and uh, she suffered from a broken leg that was never uh, given the proper attention. Um, it happened in an altercation that she had, um, so she walked with a limp. She had been separated from a lot of loved ones. She knows what it means to be alone. One person said of her, Shirley has been through so much in her life. It is amazing how quickly she seems to trust people. She emanates love and kindness. Shirley now lives in Tennessee. Uh, you might say she's a big girl. <laughs> yeah. The next month she's going to celebrate her 72nd birthday and her 21st year living in the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee. When I first met her, she had been a resident of uh, the Louisiana Purchase Zoo and Gardens, and uh, she lived there, I believe, 22 years uh, as part of the zoo. She was the only elephant in that zoo. I believe elephants are an amazing animal. When uh, Shirley was a calf, she was captured and sold to a circus. When circuses use elephants, they start off by uh, uh, they start their life by placing a chain around that elephant's ankle and then they take that chain and they hook it to a stake in the ground anchoring it when that elephant feels the tug as an infant it doesn't feel it can go anywhere and as that elephant gets bigger and they have much more strength they feel the tug of the chain and they remember I couldn't get free back here so how could I be free now and they stay in their place how do elephants fit into our midweek encouragement? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, we have been looking at a very exciting, passionate prayer that Jesus taught the disciples to pray in Matthew 6. And as I've stated before, I do not think that this passage is to be read in a monotone voice. There needs to be excitement as we share it because of who we get to enter into the presence of. And the fact that we get to have this intimacy, this closeness with God the Father as we talk to Him. So please join me once again in Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 9. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Um, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men of their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. This prayer teaches us to boldly come before God. It reminds us that prayer isn't about us, that we are to pray for others, and we, as we will see today, we are to pray for even the creepy people in our lives. As I read this prayer, I see more, that, more of it as a, a hub, the center of a wheel, because there are so many scriptures that it connects to, and it goes in so many different directions, uh, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And I believe that we need to see it only as a model or an outline of prayer and not a prayer itself. One more thought right here. This model prayer was an answer to a request that the disciples had made. It was a request that you and I can make of God, and He will answer us. I, I know He will answer you because He has answered me on this same request when I made the request. You see, the disciples came to Jesus and they said, Teach us to pray. They knew how to pray. They had been taught how to pray. But they recognized that what Jesus did was so much better and so much different than the way that they prayed. And they said, we've got to do something different. I want to do the way that he did. So I think that it's a bold prayer request to pray, Lord, teach me to pray. Or how would you like me to approach you today? 
Or what would you like to tell me today? So often, I think that in prayer, we get so busy and so concerned about all the needs that we have that we don't stop to listen to what God has to say to us. Be still and know that I am God is one of the things he often tells me. Now, um, we got to go back to a question, that elephant in the room. <laughs> what about the elephant in the room? In this prayer, he teaches us about forgiveness. Matthew 6, verse 12, it says, Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Then Jesus gives us this great warning that we need to heed. Pay attention to this. This is critical. This is so important. If you don't get anything else out of this video, forget about the elephant. Listen to this. He says, Verses 14 and 15, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men of their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Think about that for a second. Time's up. The elephant in the room. Hmm. Before we get into forgiveness, let's think about what forgiveness is not. It is not forgetting. I've often said forgiveness is given and uh, 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 trust is earned. We can be, we, we, we can all be the elephant and remember those who have done us wrong. To forget would be a sign of brain damage. God is able to wipe away all of our sorrow and all of our pain someday, but we cannot. It is not grieving. Grieving and feeling the pain does not mean that you have not forgiven. Uh, there is a danger giving forgiveness a little too quickly. Uh, it can, the damage uh, has happened and it will take time to repair. Forgiveness doesn't mean the offender isn't responsible for what they have done. Forgiveness doesn't hold, uh, when we forgive somebody, we don't hold their offense over their head. We are not responsible for their actions, but we are responsible for our reaction. Jesus illustrated this in a very amazing parable in Matthew 18. There was a man who owed someone a large sum of money. And when it was called into paying off the debt, the man said, have mercy on me. So the man that he owed a great deal of money said, okay, I forgive your debt. But this man who owed all of this money went and found somebody who owed him just a little bit. And he demanded payment right then. But when he was asked for mercy, he said, no way, I'm sending you to jail. I'm putting you in prison for that. And when the man who was owed the great deal of money found out about this, he said, okay, you're going to get the same punishment. I'm putting you in prison to be tormented, to be miserable. And that's where we are. When we refuse to forgive someone else, we are placed in torment. We are uncomfortable. It is not fun. And so Jesus is warning us that if we do not forgive, we too will be held captive. The elephant in the room, unforgiveness. In what, I, in what I said earlier about elephants, that stake would represent your offender. The chain would be the offense. And it doesn't matter how far away you move from them or they move from you. You're still shackled to them. You're still chained to them. Unfortunately, in this story, we are the elephant. Forgiveness is given. Forgiveness is giving up the perceived right to get even. 1 Peter 3, 9 says, Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing. Because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. It is no, it is, uh, forgiveness is no longer holding the offense over their head. Romans uh, twelve eighteen says, If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. It is focusing on your responsibility to forgive. Jesus looked down from the cross and he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgiveness is praying for your for offender. Praying for them uh, is taking the high road. And the beautiful thing about taking the high road is there is not a very much, there's not very much traffic on the high road. When we forgive, the chain is broken. When the chain is broken, we are no longer shackled to our offender and we are able to walk in the freedom that Jesus invites us to walk in. 
He came to set us free. And we can forgive others because we personally have experienced the grace from God. Jesus commanded us to forgive. And failing to forgive causes our prayers to go unanswered because it hinders more than just the relationship between us and our offender, but it hinders our relationship between us and God. So, thinking about the elephant. What do you give a 72-year-old elephant for their birthday? Ha! Huh, I know. Shirley loves watermelons. I just got to figure out how I'm going to get that to Tennessee. Seriously, she likes watermelons. Hope you're encouraged today. May God's blessing be upon you. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks again for supporting the ministry. If you like what you heard today, please click the like comment. If you didn't like it, please click the like comment. Just leave us a comment because you're words, your comments encourage me to keep on making videos and uh